All right, so we have talked about introductions, and now we're going to discuss conclusions. Um, again, conclusions suffer the same fate as introductions, meaning that people have a general idea of what they're supposed to do, but they don't realize that it's a little more uh, purposeful. People oftentimes just think like, oh yeah, conclusion, I'm supposed to sum up my entire paper. Not really what you should be doing. So let's take a look at writing stronger conclusions. So here is what a good conclusion should do. First of all, it should remind the reader of the thesis statement and answer the question, so what? That's a big one. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care what your assignment is. I don't care if this is a personal essay. I don't care if it's an argument paper that I'm asking you uh, to defend why fish are bad for the human race. I don't care. You need to articulate the so what. The so what is telling your reader, this is why my paper is so important. So you remind the reader of the thesis statement or the general idea of your paper, and then you make sure that your thesis address, or excuse me, that your conclusion addresses the so what. A good conclusion also gives the essay a sense of completion and closure, meaning like when they're done reading your conclusion, they shouldn't be looking for another paragraph like, wow, that was it? I mean, a bad conclusion is like a bad end to a speech where, you know, like somebody ends and then everybody kind of looks around and like, should we clap now? Should we, are we done? Oh, okay, yeah, they're done. They're done. They're walking away. So, like, that's not what a written conclusion should do either. So, if your pa if your reader says, like, oh, I was expecting more to happen, that's bad. The conclusion should leave with a final, lasting impression. So, um, it it's I know it's a little artificial to do that in in when you're writing a paper for class because your teacher has to read anywhere between like 30 to 100 of these of these essays but regardless you want this to be rewarding for whomever your reader is you want them to be to be able you want them to think about your paper when they're done you want them to think about their paper randomly as they're checking out for groceries at the grocery store you want them to be thinking about it as they're going to bed at night and i'm not saying like thinking about it every second of the day like oh my god i read this paper about miss haynes grandma and i just can't stop but no i'm asking you to think about how do you write a good conclusion that the reader finds themselves every once in a while going back to that um and i still do that there are papers that i have read years ago that i still think about because their conclusions were so not just their conclusion the whole paper but the conclusion really solidified it and again, and this last one, like make the reader happy and glad they read your paper. Uh, I guess happy isn't the right word. Glad. Thankful that they read it. So even if you're talking about a relationship that might not be so positive, you've got to give them a reason as to why they just spent that time reading your paper. And that's all of these things work together to do that. Students oftentimes think that the conclusion is just to summarize what was just said in the paper. That's not what you're supposed to do. This is what a conclusion should do, all right? So let's take a look, um, or just to expand a little bit, like this says remind the reader of the thesis statement. It doesn't say restate. Okay, oftentimes students simply reword their thesis and then summarize their entire paper. No, don't do that. Frankly, that's just as bad as your commentary being a summary. Because if you have a conclusion that summarizes your entire paper, you are again saying, hey, moron reader, I just made, I just made you read two and a half pages. I've got one more paragraph that is going to summarize the entire paper for you again. Why would you waste their time? So that's not what you're supposed to be doing. It shouldn't just be a simple summary. Um, if you find yourself saying the exact same things that you've already said in your paper, that's not a conclusion. That's a summary. Nobody wants to read a summary after they've read the entire paper. It's not like you watch a movie and then you want to go read a synopsis of the movie or you want to read or you want to watch another 10 minutes that summarizes the movie you just watched nobody does that so don't do that with your conclusion or your paragraph so how are you being assessed so meeting sta meeting standards is you do summarize a little bit but you summarize the main ideas you don't review the evidence that you used you do not discuss specifics you summarize main idea meaning that you like uh, you re uh, remind them of the main 
points, or main points, even main points is a little too much, reminding them of the main thesis, the thesis that you are discussing. And then you got to give some extension or development, meaning like, what do you want them to take from your paper? Okay, so what should you not do? First of all, do not have some kind of wishy-washy statement. Like, I hope, I hope I have conveyed to you how my grandmother impacted me. Like, don't say like, I hope that this has been good for you. Or, I know not everybody thinks my grandma's great, but I know I do. Like, what? Don't say that. First of all, that's mean to your grandma. Uh, but second of all, like, don't, you have to take a stance, all right? You are taking a stance that your relationship is important in some way, shape, or form. This is bad. Okay. Um, the other thing is that you don't want new evidence. You don't want new information in your conclusion. Now that's different than like this concept of the, um, the extension or development, the so what idea that we're talking about, because the so what should be developed, should be continuously developed throughout your paper. Like, why is it important to know that my grandmother's, str like, why was it important to uh, understand, uh, my grandmother's strength? So, you do not need, like, new information is literally new pieces of evidence, all right? Um, do not demand your reader do something. Do not be preachy and force them. Be like, my mother is the best grandmother, and anyone who disagrees with me, I'm going to fight them. Like, okay, chill out, because now it sounds like you're on the roids. Like, you're not trying to preach anything. You're just trying to illustrate. You're trying to show them and demonstrate the importance of this relationship. And this is a big one for people. Oh, jeez. Don't begin with in conclusion to sum up or something like that. Or like in summary, those are bad. Those are automatic transitions that don't really, what they do is they basically scream to your reader, I am concluding now. But you don't need to do that. Uh, so do not start your conclusions with this. And then finally, don't just summarize your essay as we had just said. Don't reword, don't do, like your, your reader read the paper, you do not need to summarize it all over again, okay? So, um, for you to prepare for your conclusion, before you write your conclusion, you should answer these questions. Why does this topic or argument matter to me? Like, why am I even pointing this out? Like, why am I talking about my grandmother? Why am I talking about my basketball coach? Those would be, I need to think about that. Like, well, they're important to me, but like, why, what do I want my reader to take away from this? Like, why do I want my reader to know about my coach or my bat or, oops, or my grandmother? Um, so like, maybe I want my reader to understand that even bad relationships can be positive ones. Maybe I want my reader to understand that people's biggest vulnerabilities might be their biggest assets. Um, and so like, what do I want, even though I'm talking about how my grandmother or my coach impacted me, what what am I trying to tell my reader about um, this relationship as well? How can they benefit from this? Um, how does my topic relate to all people? I'm talking about my grandma, right? I don't expect you to immediately understand like why my grandma should be relevant to you, but why is my grandma's impact on my relationship important to people that aren't me or my grandma? So why is this important? So let's take a look about like what you can do. Or what, this is what you should be doing in your paper, right? Remind us of the thesis. Do not put it word for word. I'm talking about like the general idea. Remind us of the idea of your thesis. Uh, reference back to your introduction. That's huge. We had talked about five different types of introduction methods. The background information, description, example, incident, uh, and the final one is the analogy. So like you can utilize that again. So if I provide background information, perhaps I bring up that background information again in my conclusion just to like make it go up like one big circle um, and connect your thesis to a broader issue in life that everyone's familiar with. So again, just like I had said, like, what are the big things to take away? Why do you care about my relationship with my grandmother? What can you learn from this? That's something that you want to do. The overall so what is why your reader should know about this relationship. Why should the reader know about that impact? So 
let's take a look at a couple different conclusions. Now, all of these conclusions um, are related to the introductions that I that you saw in the previous video. So every single one of them reference back to a specific introduction. So let's take a look at this first one. Rather than a relationship plagued by malice and tumults, my sister and I have relied on each other out of love and caring. As my own son expects a sibling, I hope he has the kind of relationship that I had with my sister. While my son might find himself in conflict with his future sibling, I know my sister's influence in me will help guide him to be a loving and empathetic big brother. Perhaps my son will take on the family tradition of proving Boise wrong in her assessments of sibling rivalries. So what I'm doing here is I'm reminding you of like my sister and I's relationship. So I don't say the thesis word for word. Then I relate to something beyond my sister and I's relationship. I talk about siblings in general and I assert, I talk about my son. So I'm talking about siblings. I relate this to my son and then I bring up Boise again. So I put, I brought up Boise in my introduction, and now I bring up that research here to bring it full circle. Again, to remind, to remind the reader that like my relationship was seemingly bizarre with my sister. I hope my son has an equally bizarre relationship to prove that research wrong. So this conclusion lets my reader know all of the things that it should do, right? Remind of the thesis, reference back to the intro, and give an overarching so what. The so what is thinking critically about uh, family, or excuse me, sibling rivalries. So let's take a look at this next one. After you've mastered the bike on your own, it's time to return the favor for your sister. Her unwavering dedication to you and your success has not waned over the years, and you know it's time your respon it's it's your responsibility to continue this endeavor. But your learned kindness does not stop with your interactions with your sister. Instead, your sister's influence continues in your everyday life. Your everyday relationships become stronger and more thoughtful simply due to your sister's model of love. So I don't specifically say, hey, this is why this is important. But I'm saying like, look at, look at the power of this dedication and, and how important this love was and how it can have lasting influences on everyday relationships. So again, I reference my thesis. I reference, or excuse me, I remind them of the thesis. So the, um, the love of my sister. So like learned kindness, et cetera, et cetera. I reference back to the intro with that bike illustration. And then the overarching so what? The overarching so what here is that this kindness can influence more than just one relationship. This is an important relationship that actually influences other people as well. So, and again, there's, you're not looking for something else. You know that this is done. And the last one. Um, it takes a while for a child to realize that thick socks have a purpose, to ward off frostbite as she plays in the snow. The socks you actually enhance the experience of building forts, or constructing a snowman, or skating at the rink. The warmth of the feet, the warmth of the feet prolongs the happiness of being outside. But it takes a while to arrive at this conclusion. The same is true, is true about siblings. Without my sister, my happiness would only have been a fraction of what it is today. However, this understanding was developed over the course of many years. The low expectations stayed low throughout my life, but my sister showed me how, slowly but surely, I can come to appreciate the socks in my life. So, again, I reference... The real, I referenced the Christmas morning, the gift that I got on Christmas, the, the socks and how much those socks suck. Then I talk about how those socks are actually good. And then I make, and then I continue that analogy and remind the reader of what I was saying about my sister. Okay. Notice how the thesis, when I say remind of the thesis, students are oftentimes taught like the thesis should be the first, when you, when you are in your conclusion, the first sentence should be your thesis, which is something that you should be taught when you're young. The reason you're taught that is to remind you that a thes your thesis should be brought up again. The idea of your thesis should be brought up again in the conclusion.
but it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly at the first sentence. Notice how I didn't bring that, I didn't bring up my thesis again until like halfway through, okay? Um, and actually developed it over the course of a couple sentences. So like you're reminding them of the general idea of the thesis and the overall importance, like the so what, like this is something like, I, pfft, this is something that can be learned, right? I would say that with this one, the so what is not as strong as this one and this one, but this is still a pretty good, um, in, this is definitely a conclusion that meets standards because it has this like idea extension going beyond just the relationship here. So um, there's, unlike the introduction notes where you had specific uh, introduction techniques that you could use, like I said, the example, um, the incident, the analogy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The conclusion doesn't really have those set up because they depend on what the introduction was. So your conclusion should reference back to the introduction. So that will help you understand like what you should talk about in your conclusion. So but notice how it doesn't say anything specific. You just need to remind us of the thesis or the main idea, reference back or kind of like utilize that idea, utilize the idea that was in your introduction and then give an overarching so what, tell them why, tell your reader why your paper in general was important for them to read.